Ross, when you make out the card, be sure to make it out to Emily. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 hilarious Friends running gags. Where do I know you from? Dr. Drake Remore. <laughs> Days of Our Lives. Voted most dateable neurosurgeon by Teen Beat. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. No. this list, we'll be going over the funniest running jokes from the sitcom Friends. If there are any gags that couldn't be any more absent from our list, please let us know in the comments. Number 20, Chandler's Dance. I'm telling you, you're going to be dancing at my wedding before you're dancing at theirs. Yeah, well, I don't dance at weddings. <laughs> Why not? Because weddings are a great place to meet women, and when I dance, I look like this. <laughs> Chandler is hopeless and awkward and desperate for love. We all know this. Part of that awkwardness is in how he moves. While generally uncoordinated at things like sports, Chandler is perhaps even less smooth at dancing. His signature moves generally involve thrusting his arms out and gyrating his hips in a decidedly unrhythmic way. I'd be going like this. Is it good dancing? Not even a little bit. What's your point? But it's certainly memorable and makes for a funny gag to watch and maybe reenact in our rooms when no one else can see us. Oh, like you haven't tried it. And the world will never know. Number 19, Dr. Drake Ramore. So, and? So, you are now looking at Dr. Drake Ramore, neurosurgeon recurring in at least four episodes! <laughs> Joey gets a lot of terrible acting gigs throughout the show, but one of his few consistent ones is on the soap opera Days of Our Lives. On the show, he plays neurosurgeon Dr. Drake Ramore. Your sister is suffering from a... A subcranial hematoma. Seeing the ever goofy Joey have to act over dramatically on TV is always entertaining, as are the numerous ridiculous storylines he's involved in on the version of the show within the show. These include falling down an elevator shaft and getting a brain transplant. What's the matter, Dina? Don't you recognize your own mother? However, the character also bleeds into Joey's real life, too, since he has to act in character for other reasons, like dealing with an obsessive fan. In reality, that operation takes, like, over ten hours, but they only showed it for two minutes. <laughs> no one. When it comes to making us laugh, Dr. Drake Ramore is always on call. Number 18, Monica's competitiveness. So maybe they could, um, call the award the Monica? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Monica has a number of quirks that make for great running gags. The first of these is how competitive she is. You'd be in competition with yourself. <laughs> That's my favorite kind. Whenever the gang plays a game or engages in a contest, Monica always goes overboard compared to everyone else. But look, you knew this about me when you married me. You agreed to take me in sickness and in health. Well, this is my sickness. <laughs> what about the obsessive cleaning? That's just good sense. Well, except for maybe Ross. Whether it's playing a friendly game of football, a trivia contest, or just tossing a ball around for fun, Monica never fails to get into the spirit of competition. Given her relationship with Ross and her parents, it's hardly surprising that she has this personality trait. But more on her family soon. It's always us left on the field holding the ball. I don't know. I guess the other people just don't care enough. Number 17, Chandler's Other Side. First time I met Chandler, I thought he was gay. <laughs> but here I am singing on his wedding day. 
Chandler finds himself in plenty of awkward situations throughout the show, but one of the most frequent is the fact that he's mistaken for being gay. Do you want a date Saturday? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> he is cute. He's funny. He's... he's a he? Well, yeah. Oh, God. I just... I feel like... Whether it's his co-workers trying to set him up with another guy, or his own friends believing it upon first meeting him, Chandler just gives off a vibe. According to them, Chandler just has this quality. Okay, I, I don't know. You, you just... You have a quality. Yes. yes. Right? Yeah. A quality. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, oh, a quality. Good, because I was worried you guys were going to be vague about this. His seemingly more feminine moments, such as when he got that hypnosis tape, certainly don't do anything to dissuade this impression. Chandler. Chandler Bing. And I'm not gay. I'm not gay at all. You are married, though. Don't listen to him. He's in a really bad mood. As much as Chandler gets teased for this, though, his friends also have their share of moments like that, too. Number 16. Ross is the favorite. You don't see Ross getting all chaotic and twirly every time they come? That's because, as far as my parents are concerned, Ross can do no wrong. You see, he's the prince. Apparently, they had some big ceremony before I was born. Although Ross's life can feel like one train wreck after another during the show, he still manages to somehow remain his parents' favorite child over Monica. Their mother, Judy, especially tends to make cutting remarks about Monica, even seeming to forget she has a daughter sometimes. Actually, no. Even if I had died, you would not be left childless. <laughs> Monica? As frustrating as it can be for Monica herself, it makes for a lot of funny comedy throughout the show. We know how expensive weddings can be. Besides, this may be the only wedding we got to throw. <laughs> mm, a joke that's funny in all countries. And all their favoritism towards Ross makes those rare moments when they are disappointed in him and proud of Monica that much funnier and rewarding. Ross, drugs, divorced again. <laughs> what happened, son? I, I, uh, I got tricked into all those things. <laughs> Number 15. The fist-banging gesture. Oh, what is the word for an adult who doesn't have dinosaur toys in their bedroom? <laughs> oh. Although the gang may be adults still making their way in the world, they're also frequently childish. One of the more immature things originates with Ross. According to Monica, her brother invented this gesture involving bumping his two fists together twice instead of giving her the finger in front of their parents in the hopes that they wouldn't be able to catch on. I remember I cried the night you made that up. This is the first time I realized I was cooler than my big brother. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go get ready. While she initially found the whole thing desperately uncool, she and most of the rest of the gang adopt the gesture to express its sentiments at each other and others throughout the show. At least I made 10 bucks in my relationship. <laughs> Plenty of Friends fans have also probably gotten a lot of mileage out of it in real life, too. Oh, I know. Um, is it because he's always correcting people's grammar? You know, whom, whom. Sometimes it's who. Yeah, sometimes it's... <laughs> Number 14, Joey and food. Uh, food. No, sex. Food. Sex. Food. I don't know. Oh, God, I want both. I want, I want girls on bread. Joey, in case you didn't know, loves food. That's a great story. Can I eat it? While he's no foodie, Mr. Tribbiani knows his way around a plate of edibles. Or six. Possessing a passion for sandwiches and other popular fare, Joey's appetite knows few bounds or volume restrictions. He's not very picky about what he eats either. He even likes the trifle made with beef that Rachel infamously made. I like it. <laughs> Are you kidding? What's not to like? Custard? Good. Jam? Good. Meat? Good. Joey also brings eating to locations you don't normally see people take food, like the shower. Just don't ask him to share, because the man refuses to do it. Joey doesn't share food! <laughs> Number 13. I know! Oh my god, Monica. 
I know. <laughs> All of the friends have little catchphrases we could have talked about. While Rachel's particular way of saying, no, <laughs> was tempting, our pick for this one goes to the way Monica says, I know. Oh, Monica, it's so beautiful. I know. Monica tends to go all in on everything, as we've discussed already, and that includes conversations. This is where your hyper-organized, pain-in-the-ass stuff pays off. I know! If she's right, and she knows it, she tends to belt out an I know with emphasis on the no at varying decibels to reiterate her point. Okay, one more time. Chandler, would you like some more orange juice? Perfect decibel. I know! Her friends have also picked up on this tendency and imitate her occasionally. I know! <laughs> also, it's among the most easily quotable catchphrases in the show. I mean, it's the end of an era! I know! <laughs> Number 12, Phoebe's Rough Life. I remember when I first came to this city, I was 14. My mom had just killed herself and my stepdad was back in prison. And I got here and I didn't know anybody. And I ended up living with this albino guy who was like cleaning windshields outside Port Authority. And then he killed himself. For how chipper and quirky she is, Phoebe Buffay has led one of the most difficult and strange lives out of anyone on the show. But nothing that sad has ever really happened to me. Well, um, how about your mom dying? Or having to live on the streets when you were 14? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I could write about the time my hair did that woohoo thing. She lost her parents at a young age and had to live on the street, turning to petty crimes and robbery to survive, while meeting plenty of unusual people and even mugging Ross. While this probably sounds more tragic than funny on paper, the contrast between Phoebe's upbeat demeanor and her often colorful history makes every one of these jokes land, particularly for fans of dark humor. Oh, I lost my mom to suicide. Okay, no way. You cannot use that to get the cute guy and the last blueberry muffin. Did I use that already today? I'm sorry. Okay. Number 11. Gunther loves Rachel and hates Ross. Thanks, Gunther. Hi. Hey. Um, can I get a napkin, too? Oh, like you don't already have everything. <laughs> Gunther is the platinum blonde-haired employee at Central Perk and its most frequently seen employee who isn't part of the main cast. He's also desperately in love with Rachel. However, his feelings are unrequited, and most of the time he just reveals hints of how he feels to other people or through inner monologues. Say, Rachel, I was wondering if you'd like to go to a movie with me sometime. As my lover. <laughs> mm, too out there. Well, that and being willing to do anything for her. Gunther's feelings also mean that he's incredibly jealous of and furious at Ross throughout Ross's on-again, off-again relationship with Rachel. Thanks for not marrying Rachel. Gunther may not get a lot of screen time, but it's thanks to this running gag and his other funny moments that he's a very memorable part of the show. I just have to tell you, I love you. <laughs> Number 10, Phalange. Hi, Ken Adams. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Regina Phalange. <laughs> Phoebe has some ridiculous quotes, but one of her most entertaining, and often subtly snuck into scenes, was this little number. Over the course of the series, whether it was pretending to be a businesswoman to win over Joey's hand twin. My name is Regina Phalange. <laughs> I'm a businesswoman in town on business. Helping Chandler with his job interview skills. Hi, come on in. I'm uh, Regina Falange. Or covering for Joey's inability to speak French, Phoebe's alter ego was always a welcome addition to an episode. I am Regine Falange. Uh, I, I was passing by when I heard this man speaking the, the regional dialect of my French town of Estelle Order. The crowning moment came when it delayed a flight. What's wrong with the plane? There's nothing wrong with the plane. Uh, the left phalange. There's no phalange. Oh my god. This plane doesn't even have a phalange. By ingeniously incorporating the word in a way only she could, Phoebe in essence managed to use phalange to save Ross and Rachel's relationship. Way to go, Regina. Number nine. Could I be? Could I be more sorry? <laughs> Chandler Bing is well known for his use of sass, sarcasm, and dry wit. Could we be more white trash? <laughs> As 
a result, he's managed to let loose a few zingers over the years, but our favorite moments have to be when he asks rhetorical questions and emphasizes his sentences in a way that's singularly his. My scone! My scone! <laughs> okay, I don't sound like that. That is so not true. <laughs> Often used when put in hilariously unfortunate situations, Chandler's overuse of kicking himself while he's down is made all the funnier with how he emphasizes the word be. Come on, she's a person, you can do it. Oh please, could she be more out of my league? Obviously, the others must have noticed because it's not long before they're imitating and mocking his catchphrase. Look at me, I'm Chandler. Could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> Number eight. Monica's perfectionism. Monica categorizes her towels. How many categories are there? Okay. Everyday use, fancy, guest, fancy guest. Two seconds. No, are you loving? Monica Geller is a lot of things. Sister, friend, chef, and a bit of a control freak. I mean, I have won awards for my organizational skills, but uh, I'm sure you'll do fine. You've won awards? Mm -hmm. I printed them out on my computer. Whether it's noticing crummies or low-key throwing a fit when someone decides to move the ottoman, she has a track record for making others live in her spick and span world. Thank God you didn't try to fan out the magazines. I mean, she'll scratch your eyes right out. <laughs> but her need to have everything just so extends way past the confines of her own home. He told me about your apartment, and um, well, I, I couldn't sleep thinking about it. <laughs> so, uh... Would it be okay if I cleaned it? Despite her desire for perfection, over the years, Monica has had to learn to roll with the punches, or else she'd go a bit crazy. I know I have this weird thing where I want everything to be in the perfect place, but I would never expect you to worry about that. Really? But hey, even the most perfect people have a few skeletons in their closet, or, you know, just a really messy secret closet. You're messy. <laughs> no, you weren't supposed to see this! Number seven. Janice. Janice? Oh. My. God. Hey, it's Janice! No other cameo strikes dread into the hearts of our favorite New Yorkers more than the high-pitched shrill of one Janice Littman Gralnick Nay Hosenstein. No one here even knows you. Oh. My. God. For the longest time, she was the one woman that pined for the love of Chandler Bing more than any other, in her own shrieking kind of way. Whenever she would appear on screen, we knew the trouble wasn't far away. Hey, you know uh, who used to have nails like that? No. Oh. My. God. Even after she had seemingly abandoned her crusade to make Chandler hers, she would still randomly pop up in later seasons, more often than not at the worst possible time. Uh Do we still love her? Just like we can't help but also love her catchphrase, oh. My. God. Yes, we do. Absolutely. What a small world. And yet I never run into Beyonce. <laughs> Number six, Chandler's job. All right, kids, I gotta get to work. If I don't input those numbers, doesn't make much of a difference. <laughs> Granted, it may not be the flashiest of jobs, but Chandler's career in the statistical analysis and data reconfiguration business has still made for a great running gag, mainly due to no one ever remembering what he actually does for a living. It's kind of a big deal, too. It's a lot more money, and I'd be doing data reconfiguration and statistical factoring. Wait, I think I know someone who does that. Me. I do that. While you'd think the joke would become stale after a while, this perpetual amnesia has actually worked itself into some brilliant moments over the series run. This has something to do with numbers and processing. And he carries a briefcase. Ten yeah. seconds. You need this or you lose the game. <gasps> it's, um, it has something to do with transponding. Oh, 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 he's a transpons transponster. Case in point, when it won Chandler and Joey an apartment. No! feel too bad there, Chandler. Monica caught on eventually. No, I want you to have a job that you love. Not statistical analysis and data reconfiguration. I quit and you learn what I do? <laughs> Number five, Ross's divorces. I love marriage. Seriously? You divorce -o? 
<laughs> if you have to call me a name, I prefer Ross the Divorcer. It's just cooler. It's fair to say that when it comes to love, Ross Geller is a walking disaster. In total, he's been married and divorced three times, and each was rather brutal. Oh, I guess we just find a divorce lawyer? Uh, well, I think, I think Ross already has one. <laughs> Ever since his first wife Carol turned out to be a lesbian, his love life has kinda not gone so well. While exchanging vows with his second bride Emily, he accidentally said Rachel's name out loud. Take thee, Rachel. Resulting in a very messy breakup. Then there was that little fiasco in Vegas where a very drunk Ross and Rachel tied the knot. No, Mrs. Ross! While we sort of feel sorry for him, we have to admit that Ross's string of bad relationships has made for great TV. I heard the weddings are like a $40 billion a year industry. Yeah, and I'm responsible for just like half of that. <laughs> Number four, Smelly Cat and other songs. Smelly Cat. Aside from the occasional burst of wackiness, Phoebe Buffay's most famous trait is her music. New York City has no power, and the milk is getting sour. Well, we say music. It's more like a medley of tracks that confuse and disorientate. Lather, rinse, repeat, and lather, rinse, repeat, and lather, rinse, repeat. As needed. But damn, are they entertaining. And please tell Joey, Christmas will be snowing! Her most iconic piece would be that of Smelly Cat, a song that frequently comes up during Phoebe's performances at Central Park, and it's as nonsensical as you'd expect. Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat, what are they feeding you? Over the years, actual musicians have tried their hands at it. It's become a jingle. Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat. Problem order in the litter box. And it even got its own music video. Smelly, 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 really bad. Smelly, smelly cat, it's not your fault. Smelly cat, smelly cat. If you ever wondered how Phoebe's conjured up such an infectious melody, well, she may have been a little inspired by her dad. Uh, sleepy girl, sleepy girl, <laughs> why won't you go to sleep? Number three, Monica and Rachel's Naked Neighbor. Ugly naked guy got a thigh master. <laughs> Just who is this mysterious figure that lives across from the apartment? We have no idea. All we know is that he doesn't particularly care for clothing. Ooh, look, ugly naked guy lit a bunch of candles. <laughs> In essence, he's like the unofficial seventh member of the group. The gang observes some of the so-called ugly naked guy's exciting antics, from the holiday appropriate Oh my god, you should see the size of his Christmas balls! <laughs> to the positively wacky Ugly naked guy got gravity boots! <laughs> the closest we ever come to meeting him is when they all think he's dead, and when Ross tries to snag his apartment for himself. I'm sorry, I... I can't help but notice that you're naked. And... But it is sure nice to know that there's an ugly naked gal in his life. All right, ugly naked guy. Oh, ugly naked dancing. Number two, how you doing? Oh, oh well, what I do is uh, I look a woman up and down and I say, hey, how you doing? Joey Tribbiani, before all else, is a ladies' man. Oh, sure, he cares about his friends, his acting career, and stuffing his face with as much food as possible. How you doing? <laughs> but there's nothing that catches his attention more than a pretty girl. Joey's got a fair amount of moves in his dating arsenal, but this catchphrase sets hearts aflame and leaves us in stitches more than anything else. Whenever a potential romantic encounter crosses his path, Joey will utter these three immortal words. What's up, Joey? <laughs> How you doing? Have they ever failed him? You be the judge. How you doing? I'm okay. What? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
you have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, we were on a break. We were on a break. Oh, you know, Ross, why don't you just put that on your answering machine? Ross and Rachel's breakup and the emotional fallout that subsequently followed was one of the most heartbreaking moments in the entire show and paved the way for one of the most iconic will they won't they TV relationships of all time. It also spawned this hilarious catchphrase, which even the most casual Friends fan knows. We were on a break! <laughs> oh my god, if you say that one more time, I'm gonna break up with you. Ross has a tendency to either say the wrong thing or to say it at the wrong time, and you knew he was digging himself a hole whenever he decided to use this as an argument. Ross, just let sleeping dogs lie. It's you and me, all right? This is it. This is it. Unless we're on a break. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.